when the, um, when the Western uh, churches went out in the 16th century and encountered the African, the Native American, the Native um, Asian religion of, uh, of ancient ways of prayer. So we do this in our, in our institute, and I think it's an essential part of recovering a living cosmology, mm -hmm. which I think is the only hope that Mother Earth has of survival, frankly, is the human race mm -hmm. changing its ways from violence to um, cosmology, to mysticism. Uh -huh. you, you seem to suggest in your writings, uh, and it's surprising to me to, to read this in the writings of, of a Catholic priest, that, that religion itself works against genuine spirituality. Well, it often has. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps it doesn't have to. But um, I think that religion often becomes a sociological phenomenon. You certainly see it in your uh, right-wing uh, television preachers and so forth, where religion is being manipulated for political reasons and economic gain. Um, and, of course, this is what Jesus took on in his own day, and any prophet does, criticize religion. Gandhi was, in fact, criticizing the Hindu religion of his time in proposing the intimate connection between social justice and moral development. Hinduism in his day had split the two things, as religion does whenever it goes corrupt. So the renewal of religion is always out of some kind of spiritual awakening uh, of the community as well as of the individual. Mm -hmm. How do you define spirituality? Well, um, I would understand spirituality, spirituality is basically the um, Eckhart talks about the innermost part of our being. It's the innermost commitment and experience um, that is also the cosmic experience. I, I think it's impossible to separate authentic spirituality from community celebration, community healing, social justice, any of these things. But it comes out of our depths and living out of our depths instead of out of superficiality. Mm -hmm. What Paul calls the inner person instead of the outer person. And I know in one of your books you suggest that spirituality is a way of life. And exactly, a way of life. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something that dictates our response to everything in life, whether it be the, uh, the beauty of the trees, uh, the winds, the suffering, the pain, uh, the creativity. It's our response to all of this. And the creation tradition maintains that our basic response for being here is, uh, wow, <laughs> it's awe and wonder. Uh, Rabbi Heschel says that uh, wisdom begins with awe, and um, spirituality is that experience of wisdom as opposed to just knowledge. But awe is really our, our basic experience. The more science is telling us today about the amazing story of the universe and our being here, how there were decisions made in the first millisecond of the fireball 19 billion years ago on our behalf, without which Earth wouldn't have evolved to be a hospital place for us, you have to begin with awe and wonder, and that's where the mystic always begins. Mm -hmm. I think. And then you, in, in your writing, seem to suggest that compassion is absolutely the, essential and has been yes. lost in the Christian church. Well, not altogether, but I think, yes, in culture, Western culture, too, that compassion has been um, trivialized, sentimentalized. People often think of it as dropping crumbs from the table or feeling feelings of pity. Whereas really, the biblical tradition is that compassion means justice, as Eckhart says, and it means this uh, basic healing that comes out of our um, yearning for unity and the sharing of our common uh, experience. It also means celebration, though. Compassion is 50% healing, and it's 50% about enjoying and celebrating. Mm -hmm. And it's not just anthropocentric. You know, we, we have compassion with the other animals of the world, and the trees and the soil and all the suffering that Mother Earth is under today uh, is really an invitation to uh, wake up to our capacity for compassion. Uh -huh. You've referred now several times to Eckhart, to Meister uh -huh. Eckhart, who was also a Dominican priest. Right, a fellow uh -huh. heretic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh. He seems to be a very important uh, original figure in, in the development of creation spirituality. Definitely, yes. A 14th century mystic social activist who got himself in trouble because he was involved with the peasants of his day and with the women's movement, the Beguines of the 14th century. And, um, but he's recognized as the uh, foremost uh, Western mystic that we've produced. Uh, Dr. Suzuki, the Zen Buddhist, you know, was in a dialogue with Thomas Merton in 1959, and he gave up. He said, Tom, you're just like every other dualistic Westerner I've ever met. You'll never get Zen except one outside chance. He said, if you read uh, your one Zen thinker of the West, Meister Eckhart, you might get us. And Merton said, well, Eckhart's been condemned. And Suzuki says, well, I can't help that. <laughs> so Eckhart, or Merton spent 1960 reading Eckhart and Zen poetry, and mm -hmm. it converted him 
from being basically a romantic monk of the 50s to being a really prophetic figure uh, in culture and the church in the 60s. And he had a strong influence on you personally, didn't he? Yes, Merton did, yes. In fact, yeah, he sent me to Paris to do my doctorate. I mean, he told me that would be the place to go. And um, uh, he, was, he was a good man. But Eckhart um, is so amazing because he speaks out of a deep feminist tradition and out of the deep Jewish tradition of the wisdom literature. Um, he brings together the justice struggle and the, the deep mystical experience like, like it's very hard to find in any other uh, writer of the West. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his influence has been so great outside the church. Carl Jung says that Eckhart gave him the key to the unconscious, opening up the unconscious. He's a big influence on Karl Marx, which has been proven by some Marxist historians. Uh, George Fox, the founder of the Quakers, very influenced by Eckhart. So he's had all this influence on uh, cultural figures. But what I'm trying to do is show the church that Eckhart lies in the real center of the entire Christian message. His mm -hmm. writing is immensely um, biblical. Uh -huh. Well, to this day, some 600 years later, Eckhart's works still stand condemned by the church. They do. The uh -huh. Catholic Church is not always swift in, um, in changing its mind. You know, they just let Galileo off the hook a few years ago, so you know, you have to be kind of patient. They burned Joan of Arc at the stake and then canonized her 500 years later. So it takes a good sense of humor to, to, and a sense of history to remain Catholic in these circumstances. But actually, the Dominican Order has petitioned Rome to lift the, um, the opprobrium over Eckhart, and rumors are that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that's the heart of the matter. The heart is, is this man a spokesperson for wisdom, or isn't he? And everyone I know who's encountered him find that kind of truth in his writing. Yeah. Thank you.